Okay, so in this talk, it's, it's sort of a continuation of the degree difference text, except we are going to consider some examples of integrations and summations that don't quite quite work, uh, or where the degree differences doesn't quite work, and in fact, even the generalizations we have of that don't work directly. So we have to go back to first principles, which is the integral test. Now, if you remember, how did we actually establish the degree difference test? We essentially, uh, the summations we converted to the integrals using the integral test, and the integrals we then converted to a simplified version of the integral by comparison, where we just had 1 over x to the degree q minus. So, if you have these, either of these, it essentially reduces to checking whether this integral converges. Okay? So, use integral test to go back and forth between these and then use a basic comparison or limit comparison to convert to this problem. So, we are going to, to tackle, uh, tackle the, the cases which don't, which you cannot directly do using the same approach. We go back to first principles. So let me first, let me first uh, write down a simple, simplest example here. So I want to do summation k equals t to infinity 1 over k So, what do you what can you convert it to using the integral test? Can you rotate? Yeah. What what can you convert this to? You convert it to an integra integration problem. We have to figure out whether this converges, mm -hmm. right? But but uh, this is equivalent to figuring out whether what converges. So just change the summation sign to the integral sign. And I'll also change the variable to x. And does that mean that integral and the summation should be equal? No. Just means one converges if and only if the other. Okay, so what is this? Well, what's the indefinite integral for 1 over x and x? Uh, it is, it is 1 and an x squared over 2. No, the x and l and x are both in the denominator. Uh, oh, it is ln of l and x. Yeah. So, for those of you watching, if you cannot do this mentally, that's fine. You can just do the u substitution u as l and x and then do it again. Okay, and does this converge? No. Uh, no, diverges, right? So that means the summation diverges. Uh, if I had given you the one with alternation, would it converge? If I give you the thing with minus 1 to the k up here? No. Oh. It would converge, yeah. right? For the same it reason. Will. Yeah. So, if I give you the alternation Sorry. one. Yeah, the alternation one converging sort of doesn't depend on, like that's true whenever the degree difference is bigger than 0. Right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's true sort of in both these cases. We are in a situation which is somewhere sort of in between these cases. But it's still true, the alternating thing still converges. Converges. But now since the since the non-alternating thing diverges, this converges conditionally. Okay, good. Uh, let's do now now suppose I gave you something like uh, Suppose I gave you integral 5 to infinity x ln x over x squared plus 1 dx. Oh, now this diverged, right? Mm -hmm. Because here it's the degree minus. was minus. So what's the one which, which we don't know? Oh, here it is. So you have, so this diverges, this you don't have to do integral test. Because here the degree. Yeah, so we should the numerator. Okay, so let's do the other one. So this is x plus 1 over x squared at an x. 
This is inconclusive by just the naive degree difference. The denominator is slightly more than two, numerator has degree one, and the difference of degrees is slightly more than one. Okay. So what do we do? Well, we could try to directly compute this integral. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's a hard indefinite, uh, that's a hard problem uh, for indefinite integration, right? Yeah. So, but you don't actually have to do this integral because you can do, first you can do a uh, limit comparison and say that actually this integral converges if and only if this one converges. We don't care about where it starts really. Okay. But these two integrals, these two integrals actually if you take the quotient, it goes to uh, one. Yeah, can I just take the quotient? Oh, no. It's, yeah, it's quite straightforward. So that's actually called the... Quotient rule. Well, not the quotient. It's a limit comparison for integrals, yes. So I want to do this. What is that? So... Is x plus 1 over x? This goes to 1. So, so therefore, this one converges if and only if that converges. You actually have to check a few more things there, all non-negative things eventually, etc. But that is not that. So instead of doing this integral, we just do this one. Okay. So what I'm saying is, you don't actually have to do tricky indefinite integrals. You can just convert to a problem which is relatively easy and then solve. Okay. So let's do something different. So let's do integral of So if we figure out that this one converges, this is x times quadratic in ln x, mm -hmm. then any anything else which has the same type of shape would also converge using the limit comparison or basic comparison. So this is dx. Shouldn't forget writing that. Yeah. So what is this? What do you mean? What's the indefinite integral? Let's just do it. Uh, if we then we that uh, we Okay, what is this? That's pi over 2. So it's finite, right? So it converges. We don't really care about the value, but the point is it converges. Which means that anything of this form, where you have x times a quadratic in ln x in the denominator, it would converge. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now actually you can sort of give a general rule which once you have the general rule, you don't have to do the do the integral test, which is that if the if the degree difference is one, then you sort of just take away all the polynomial thing and just look at the logs. Okay, so so I can type that down the so for things involving. Something like okay, so so you have summation. I just read the summation one of k over q k times f l n k over g l n k. Okay, and you assume again that you have non-zero things, etc. And let's say that degree q minus degree p is actually exactly equal to one. Okay, so the the sort of the polynomial part, the degree difference is one. Mm -hmm. Then you just look at degree g minus degree f. And we really care about whether if that degree difference is greater than one, then it will converge. Mm -hmm. Okay, if that degree difference is uh, less than or equal to one, it will diverge. Okay, we don't really have to make cases for the zero lesson. But so if this is
So you just have two cases here. Okay, so let's look at our lab previous thing just to see the pattern. So we had uh, this one, okay. The linear part, the degree difference was just one. one. The logarithmic part, the degree difference was. So you can just imagine this as one times one, right? There's a one over k times one over l. The linear part, degree difference one. Log part, degree difference is one. One. So it diverges, right? That's what we call. Now here, the linear part, the degree difference is one. The log part, the degree difference is so there's two in the denominator. Numerator is just zero. Zero. So it's two, two. and so diverges. Okay. Okay. So, but but this is like a complicated rule, and and instead of trying to memorize this rule, you can just say let's use the integral test. But you can in fact get it down to a rule, and you can write similar things for the integrals, for the integral version. Okay. The signed ones will always converge, and they'll converge absolutely if the unsigned one converges, and they'll converge conditionally if the unsigned one diverges. Okay.